Hello, hello, hello. It is Stephanie here and I've got this special series of lives in the run up to the launch of the Rent to Rent Success book tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm choking. It's Friday, the 29th of January that it will actually launch. And today joining me as a guest is Giuseppe Leone of Lion Gate Properties joining us. And he's built a rent to rent empire in Bristol. Like all of our guests this week, rent to rent really rocketed for Giuseppe and helped him to build up his own property portfolio. Before I dive in today, let me explain that this is the sixth in the series of seven lives that I'm doing in the, the run up to the launch of the Rent to Rent Success book. And you can catch the replays of all those amazing guests at Rent to Rent Success Facebook page, Rent to Rent Success uh, YouTube channel, and on the Rent to Rent Success podcast if you prefer listening. And yes, if you would like to buy the book tomorrow, if you're in our VIP launch, you can already buy the book. If you're not in our VIP launch, you'll be able to buy the book from tomorrow. Simply go to renttorentsuccess.com slash book, and it will divert to the Amazon page tomorrow as soon as the link, or even tonight, as soon as the link is, is ready. And I have been having an incredible amount of fun doing these lives, speaking to property investors about their journey in rent to rent and in property. But I totally love that you are here with us in the comments. So uh, if you're here with us, um, I always ask you where you are, but tell me where you are again. It's an easy one. <laughs> and just say hello, say hi to Giuseppe. Um, and um, ask any questions you have. Giuseppe is knows everything there is to know about rent to rent. He will be happy to answer your questions. So please do comment. Don't go away with any questions. Uh, without any further ado, let me welcome rent to rent rock star Giuseppe Leone to the show. How are Hello. you? Very well, thanks to you. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited about today. And yeah, I'm very keen to be here. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's it's my pleasure. I first came across you, Giuseppe, at the Rent to Rent live show, where you have been sort of mentoring uh, some attendees on different um, roadblocks that they're having with their rent to rent, and I was really impressed. Um, Thank you. The much. way that you approach, uh, you know, the way you approach challenges and help people over their own blocks but today we just want to talk about you and tell us a little bit about you and um how you first found rent to rent and got started into it yeah so first of all thank you again for inviting me i'm really happy to be here and uh, yeah so my name is giuseppe leone i'm italian as you can clearly tell from my silly accent and i live and invest in bristol and um, I uh, used to work for Shell, the oil company. I worked for them for 17 years. So in fact, I would just work for that company. And I truly enjoy that. So I'm not one of those guys that say corporate life is rubbish. I, I enjoy it. I will do it again. Mm -hmm. However, seven years ago, I want to prove to myself I could build my own business. And uh, when I was a kid, I always want to be an architect. And uh, then I don't know why I studied at the uni business and finance, which, by the way, helped me to run my business. But I always had my, you know, the, in my blood, the passion for floor plan, properties and so on. So as I said, seven years ago, I went to, to build my own business. And so I thought, why don't we do it in, uh, in property? So at that time, I didn't have a lot of money available in cash to invest. So I just simply Googled property strategies where you don't require a lot of um, uh, cash up front and a rent to rent popped up. And to be honest, I didn't have any idea of what rent to rent was till uh, that moment. And uh, but as usual, very open-minded as I am. I read about that. I went to a two days course. I was a little bit skeptical, to be honest. I remember talking with Jill, my wife, I said, mm, sounds too good to be true, but you know what? It's a couple of days in London, why not? In the worst case scenario, I will meet nice people and we'll have spent a weekend in London anyway. And um, so I went to this course and then I came back and I said, well, actually, it's as good as it sounds. I think we found our strategy. And um, after that, I did a mentoring course for 12 months. And uh, that was the, the start of my career. And today, seven years later, 
We got a large rent rent portfolio here in Bristol. We also managed to build our own portfolio. And uh, even more importantly, my wife used to manage to leave her, rent, her, her corporate job two years after we started. And I left three years after I started. So within three years from the start, working part time, we managed to replace two fairly big corporate salaries, which, which I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, yeah, that's a fantastic yeah. story. I think a lot of people will be able to relate to the first part, you know, finding, you know, Googling, how can I get started in property uh, without a lot of money? And then finding it and thinking, aye, aye, this doesn't seem right. And then finding out more and going into it. Yeah. But but what happens sometimes, Giuseppe, as you know, is that people will look into it, think it sounds a good idea, but they won't take the next step because they've got fears or doubts. So what were the fears or doubts that you had and how did you overcome them to actually get started? Well, the fear was uh, maybe it doesn't work or will not be good enough to, to make it successful. And, um, and that's why I decided not only to to attend the course, which is very important because it sets the foundation. I also to have, um, I want to have a mentor who could really hold my hand and kick my legs, <laughs> motivation-wise, uh, on a continuous way for six, 12 months. Because, you know, when you start something new, as smart as you can be, there is always something that can uh, scare you or make you freeze and so on. And if you know that on the other end of the phone, you got a very experienced person who can just tell you how to overcome that fear. Or maybe it's a proper fear and it's correct not to go for it. And so they say, well, you're right. You should not do that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have got somebody who can guide you and uh, help you. And then, you know, rent to rent is not rock and science. So let's be honest here. It's, it's a process. Once you learn the process properly, you've done three or four times then you copy and paste and repeat. And by the first two or three ideas that you need to have somebody holding your hands and do it properly. Yeah. That's, that's I, 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 my approach. Yeah, I think the concept of it is very simple. You rent the property, you rent yeah. it out again. I think where some of the complexities come into it is when you start to implement, the first thing you do, you're going to have questions, like for the first time, oh, so I just go to the landlord, what do I say? And all of these exactly. other questions come in and that's where the experience um, really helps. So- Yeah, so and uh, sorry for interrupting. The other thing that is very important in rent rent, I mean, a lot of people try to underestimate that is to, you need to run it 150% compliance because uh, it's not a very regulated ma uh, material. So, and a lot of people think, well, I can watch two videos on YouTube and have learned it, I think that's really dangerous. You need to use the right contract and uh, fit with all the legislation properly. And then, yeah, it can be done, but don't take shortcuts because you put yourself, your tenants, your lender at risk and it's not yeah. worth it, yeah? yeah. So, um, Yes, and um, thank, thanks, Giuseppe. Melvina said she's so excited. Hello, Atlanta's just saying afternoon, Stephanie and Giuseppe. We've got Andrea, hello from Surrey. And we've got Melvina saying hi, G. And Nicole hello. saying good afternoon. It's lovely to see you all as, as we go through. If you have any questions that you'd love to ask Giuseppe, please just put them in the comments. But for now, I've got a question that I would love to ask you. How yes, do you start off? Because some people at the very beginning tend to prefer the letting agents and some people tend to prefer the landlords. Which way did you go in the beginning? I went with a direct to landlord. So what I did is I sent probably 800, 850 letters directly to landlord. And, um, and I got three replies. Two of them told me, please take me off your register. I said, oh, that's a good way to start my business. Excellent. However, the third one was the lender who gave me three properties straight away. Wow. And, uh, and um, so that's the way I started. However, again, the first property was my worst deal ever because at that time it was not very experienced. And so I decided to take on a house with... Uh, uh, the window with a single glaze with aluminum ah. frame. 
can you be so silly? Yes, I was. And, uh, and so I took that one on board. And then for the following six months, I had help from my tenants. Correctly so, to be fair. Because the house was almost a house without windows. And it was winter time, by the way. And um, so luckily, my landlord is a really cool guy. And uh, he understands uh, properties very well. He's got a big, big portfolio. So I managed to convince him to replace uh, the windows with you know, double glass PVC windows and so on. So after that, uh, everything ran very well. In fact, I purchased that specific house one year ago from that landlord. And now he's my own HMO. And uh, so... Um, yeah, so I purchased two or three properties from my landlords, uh, and that's the other beauty of rent to rent that there is always, you know, an additional strategy you can attach to it, and you can build your portfolio through your rent to rent business, which is an additional bonus. Well, that is wonderful. Let me just pull out a few things that piqued my interest as you were talking. So, I didn't. Oops, I'm throwing my pen away. How, how many letters did you say that you sent? 800, uh, 850, roughly. So yeah, a lot. I, I think that people might be surprised that it's so many for so few calls. But yeah. it's so incredible, isn't it, that it only takes one. And then that one, even if it was one property and it was £500 a month and it was five years, it's 60 thousand pounds if I got that right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and um, and so so it's it's phenomenal to be able to to have this way of meeting the landlords. And then the next thing was, oh, the next thing was the lease options. Yep. So not only can you rent the property, manage them ongoing, make the cash flow, but you can also buy the properties without needing a lot of money to start off. So I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about that, Giuseppe. So the, the, the first one, the first comment you made on the success rate of the marketing campaign, you are absolutely right. If I look at percentage wise, it's dreadful. I mean, it was probably 0.1% in success rate. But as you said, you just need one, yes, and you have uh, more than recover your marketing cost. And um, the, the letter direct to vendor work if you keep doing them yes. on, a, on, a, on a regular basis every two, three months, so at least three or four times a year. And ideally, you want also to have, uh, you know, follow-up letters so you don't send the letters always the same. And um, what I was surprised, a couple of years ago, one lender called me out of the blue and I say, are you Giuseppe Leon? I say, yes. Are you Lion Gay Property? I say, yes. Are you still trading? I say, very much. And I say, well, you sent me a letter two years ago. I say, wow, <laughs> really? And he said, yes, you did. And, uh, and uh, he said, I was very impressed by your letter, but it was not the right moment two years ago. Now, I reached my pension time, so I'm going away, traveling so on. So now your proposition makes sense to me. Can we meet and have a chat? So you never know what happens to that letter. And I'm amazed by the fact that people keep letters for months or years yeah. and then potential. So, that's why you need to do it on a regular basis because um, you just need to hit that person at the right moment. If today is not the right moment, uh, it doesn't work, but maybe in six months time, that's the right moment and then you have success. So don't, don't get depressed about the, the very low percentage success rate. They go on a yeah, hard number, how much money you make out of that and, and it's worth it. Absolutely. Um I encourage people, just that consistency is so important. Let me just welcome, um, we've got Crazy. Um, Hello, Crazy. We've got Nicole. How did you get your first deal? And did you have to convince landlords and netting agents to work with you when you have no track record? Now, this one comes up quite a lot. So how did you convince this landlord that you were a good bet? So uh, I convinced saying that, uh, uh, first of all, I show him all my his, uh, previous um, professional life. So I worked for a big corporation for 70 years. I did a pretty good uh, career. So I showed that professionally I can perform pretty well. And then I also share with uh, my lender all my education. I did uh, to, to run that strategy. So I said, well, I didn't watch two videos and then came and knocked at your door. I invest a lot of money and time to, to, to learn 
how to do that. And by the way, I've got a mentor on the other end of the phone, which I can call it any time. If I've got a question or a matter I cannot solve, I've got a very experienced person behind me who can help me to, to solve it. And um, yeah, and he trusts me. And, uh, you know, I'm still working with this guy seven years later. And we have become very good friends now. And, um, and again, you will not convince all of them. It's a numbers game. Uh, you, you talk with 10 and you convince two. And, uh, and that's good enough. But uh, as I said, numbers game. Calls on calls, letters on letters. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's the way to do it, in my opinion. So you should not be a sniper. You need to just go big in numbers and then it will work. Yeah, I love that. And what people do often downplay is their own fabulousness. So what I mean by that is they just say, oh, but I've got no experience in property. Yes, but you've got something. So maybe like uh, some uh, one of the ladies was a nurse. And I said, well, who doesn't trust a nurse? I mean, it, that's just... <laughs> Uh, and you know you could have had 17 years in corporate you could have been at home with your family whatever your sometimes the landlords really connect with you you know having we had uh, Maria who's got three young children and her landlord really connected with her running it as a family business and having only this one property to look after the the landlord really saw it as a plus so we've got Georgie with us we've got Carol saying hello and hello uh santana and carol saying she purchased the book oh sorry i'm totally yes. in love with carol Bradley. thank you um i hope you love it carol um and prince is just congratulating you on your on your work now atlanta's got a great question here for you giuseppe did you start your business as a sole trader or as a company so first of all, I'm not an accountant, so talk to you with your accountant. However, based on my situation, my accountant recommended me to start as a limited company. And uh, that's the way I start. So I've got a limited company that is behind my brand, my place in Bristol. And then I've got a limited company behind my other company, Lion Gate Property, which is my vehicle to purchase assets for, for me and my family. And um, yeah. That, that's great. Thank you for answering that question. And um, I we talked a bit a little bit about landlords and how you approached it with the letters and yeah. how you showed why the landlord should consider you. And obviously it was successful. Can yeah. you give us some tips? People also worry on the other side about letting agents, working yeah. with letting agents. Have you worked with letting agents much, Giuseppe? I work mainly with letting agencies, so I'm a little bit controversial here. I much prefer work with uh, letting agencies than with uh, landlords. Uh, I've not, I don't have anything against landlords, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I think uh, you, that's my opinion, okay? Uh, if you go through a letting agency, you can uh, increase your business much more quickly than if you target landlords. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, if you target the landlords, you let's say that you want 10 houses, and usually there is a ratio of 10 to 1. So you need to call 10 landlords to get one house. So in my example, you need to target 100 lenders to get your 10 houses. And then you need to nurture and keep alive 10 different relationships with the 10 different lenders. Yeah? Uh, with a letting agency, if you do a good job, potentially you can get all the 10 houses through one letting agent. Mm -hmm. So you build one relationship and they give you all the, so they've done all the hard work mm -hmm. to go to the older lenders and you just leverage from their network. Um, and uh, so I I much, much prefer doing that. And then maybe this is Bristol more than anything else. I find that the quality of properties rented through letting agents is slightly better than uh, if you go direct with the lender most of the times and um but the reason why i lay, letting agents love working with me i love uh, love working with them is because i explain straight away that uh, in this rent to rent and company let agreement the letting agent and me we work as a partner so uh, what the way the reason why a letting agents should love working with me is because if they are doing just tenant finder they can uh, execute that tenant file much more quickly because I don't need to give any notice. I can, you know, go through all references in two, three days and they get paid straight away. 
And by the way, as you know, now tenant fee are one, but a letting agent can still charge you, you know, on a business to business level. So they can still make money out of me, which, which is a good point for a letting agent at the moment. And, um, and if the letting agent is, do, is uh, acting as also management for the lender, we basically offer them a sub level of management. So what I'm telling to the letting agent is, you can still get paid, but we do all the hard work. So we take away a, lo a lot of work from your desk and you still get paid. So I get my money through this deal. You get the money from the lender and you work much less. So it's a win-win yeah. -win situation. So we are not competitors. We are partners here. And if you convince them that you work as a partner, you, you fly with them. And, um, that's yeah. it. That, that's such a good point because I think it is it is about partnership in terms of with your landlords, with your agents, with your housemates, even you're both providing your side of the relationship uh, to keep everything really nice. So tell us about the next big issue, isn't it, hurdle that people have in their minds often is the refurb. From what yeah. you've there's maybe you tend to go for better quality properties where there's less refurb or how do you tackle that side of things Giuseppe? Well it's a very good point this is developed during the year so at the beginning I tended to accept almost anything as long as it was structurally sound so I the first few properties I even fully repented them and changed the flooring and so on and um, the way I tend to do it is really to to split the the cost so if it was something that was going to stay there for example if i replace a carpet with a laminate flooring i would uh, tend to ask my landlords to pay for it because you know when the our counter would finish i would not walk away with uh, you know the piece of wood of the floor <laughs> and go away uh why on the other hand if we had to just repaint the property I did it myself because, you know, there is wear and tear. You keep repenting the property every two, three years. So we tend to split that. And a couple of times my lender were happy with the idea, but they didn't have money to do it. So the way to convince them, I said, well, that's not a problem. I pay in advance for making this happen. So I pay for the laminar floor, for laying the laminar floor there and so on. And then I give you a 0% interest loan. So. Uh, you repay me back this investment in 12 months, so I reduce my rent by one twelfth of that okay. loan. Yeah. And um, so he's happy because it's not yeah. anticipated cash flow. And I'm happy because I've got a house that now fits the criteria of my tenants, so I can rent it a higher rent with my tenants. And so it's a win win situation again. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, but now that, you know, seven years later and so on, I tend to to pick and choose just the beautiful houses, if I can. And yeah. uh, um, in fact, the last one I got it, I didn't need to spend one penny. It was beautifully, beautifully furnished and uh, it was beautifully refurbished as, as well. So I just need to turn the keys and move in. And uh, it doesn't happen very often, to be honest. So don't get too excited. <laughs> but when it happens, it's a good feeling because you know, you make inf almost infinite returns, uh, returns straight away. Which is, which yeah, is yeah. I, th I think we've we we. I was just thinking, what do we like? We like the beautiful landlords. So um, we've had some absolutely p properties in appalling state, but lovely people who were in charge. Um, but f for various reasons, things have gotten away from them, and so we've been able to help them to get things back on track. And we've had other properties that were actually okay. But it turns out the landlords weren't so good or responsive or and so we just prefer to now only work with the landlords where it's like a hell yeah rather than a mm, no, not sure <laughs> absolutely absolutely correct and uh in fact in all my seven years i had just one landlord that he uh, sounded really cool at the beginning and then he didn't uh, really act on uh, any extraordinary maintenance so at one point we had a leak from the roof it was making like a waterfall exactly on the bed of one of oh, my no. pool. and, and uh, it took him three months to fix that bit there and he said well you just move the bed and put a bucket there i said are you kidding me this is my talents he spent money 
and you want to have a waterfall in his uh, in his bedroom. Yes. So that's the only case where I I managed to finish the, the contract earlier and I just gave the kids back and said, well, I can't work with somebody like you. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Because um, you've got to have a nice, uh, oh, excuse me, business and life. And it just pays to be working with people who are yeah. right thinking. Um, so Brooke has asked the question now, how do you attract tenants and is there low demand for rooms during lockdown or January? Yeah, so the, I think the, the key trick is to have a nice product. So if you have a, a house which is average, and there's nothing wrong with that, uh, you compete with the majority of your competitors. If you have got a premium product, you know, like you know, behind you, you have a beautiful gray, gray walls, nice white uh, um, door and so on. If you, if you give a great product, you attract uh, the good tenants and there is always a, a request for good tenants. So I find my tenants on mainly on um, um, uh, uh, marketplace, Facebook marketplace. I go in the oh. spare room, and then there are a lot of uh, you know Facebook uh, 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 specific uh, groups. Like in, in Bristol, there is Bristol rooms to rent or some, something like that, and uh, that's the way I found them. But now that I've been doing this for seven years, most of the times my tenants ref, uh, refer me to their friends and, uh, and family and so on. And the other thing that I do is I've got some boards outside my houses. And, um, you know, uh, we all, always try to do everything online. I'm probably a little bit older than most of you guys, and I'm all fashion sometimes. You know, I've seen photos of letting agency having a board there 200 years ago. And if 200 years later they're still doing that, there must be a reason. Yeah. There must work. Yes. In fact, they yeah. do work. Yeah? Yeah, they obviously do work. You, yeah. 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 Obviously, you cannot put the board everywhere because if you are rented through a letting agency obviously you cannot do it but you know for all your own houses or the one where you went straight uh, to the lender you can do it and it does work very well yeah. and um, yeah. and then Rook back to your second question uh, uh, demand for lockdown yeah to be fair it was a little bit slower so instead of renting my property in one or two weeks it, it took me probably three or four weeks uh, I'm amazed I've not had one void in all lockdown. I was not expecting that. So I'm, I'm really as shocked as everyone else. And um, I wouldn't say that January is the, the worst time to rent. I would say that December is the worst time to find tenants because people that want to move uh, around Christmas, they've got their money in the Christmas lunch. Not this year, unfortunately, but usually. Uh, and, and so on. So uh, December is the worst month to, to find tenants, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think you, you, you just get over these little hurdles that come up. Whatever you do, it has hurdles in it. When you go to your nine to five job, the people, the reason why people, lots of people want to get out of their job is for more freedom. And yeah. to do that, you've got to go overcome these hurdles, you know, finding the property, right. talk to the landlords, and then finding the tenants. And um, we've had another question. It's about the lease options. So before we come yeah. on to that question, It'd be great to hear from you, Giuseppe, how with that very first landlord, how did it just go from normal rent to rent into a lease option, which just to explain for people who are new to this, is some is a way that you can buy the property without, usually without a big deposit or without needing a mortgage at the start. So, Yeah, so a, a lease option means that you agree with the landlord today to purchase the property in the future and the fixed price that you fix today. And usually you can exchange with one pound, yeah? So actually that's your commitment. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the, the time of that lease option, let's say it's five years uh, lease option, after five years, you can uh, execute it, so you purchase it, or you can just uh, say, no, I don't want to execute it anymore. And um, however, <laughs> the lender cannot change their mind. So the lender is locked into this lease option uh, uh, agreement. Um, so that's the smart way to do it. Unfortunately, I didn't do it in that smart way. I did it in a very normal way. So after a few years of renting my properties, I just called the lender and say, listen, I, I tested your property for, for a few years. I love it. 
I'm building my own portfolio in exactly this area. Uh, have you got any intention to sell your property? And uh, yeah, he said yes. So I purchased it slightly below market price. Um, so it's, it was not an amazing deal, but you know, it was a good deal anyway, because I, I had my tenants in and um, I knew the property very well. And what I did is I kept running it for six months as it was. And then I stopped, I, I got all my tenants out and I refurbished that completely. And then I re-rent it properly six months later. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, that's why I love rent to rent. You can buy properties either via this option, which is the smart way to do it, honestly, or just asking the land and say, do you want to sell it? Are you you agree on the price at that moment. And the interesting thing about that, Giuseppe, is it's a stepping stone, isn't it? Because when you first started seven years ago, you were looking for something where you didn't need a lot of money to start. So you might not have been thinking, right, I'll just buy a property. But six years on, I mean, I know you've bought many properties before that now, but you're in a position where you can just buy that property because of the money that you're now making through your own business. And that that's... Right. Uh, the fantastic thing about business in general, but in particular the business of rent to rent, because it's something that anyone who wants to can do. And Absolutely. That, that leads me up to Nicole's question. I'm not sure why Nicole's asking this. Maybe you'll say in the comments, Nicole, but she's just interested in whether your lease option with the landlord is through a limited company or through personally. Again, it depends on your situation. Uh, First, if I had to do it, I would do it through my limited company because I purchased all my properties through my limited company. And yeah. um, again, talk, Nicole, talk to your accountant and he or she will tell you the exact way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've talked a bit about a lot of the different roadblocks that I know that people have and questions that you probably get asked a lot yourself, Giuseppe. But is there any advice that you'd like to give people that you wish you had known at the start? Uh, that's a good point. I would say be prepared to go through, you know, a quite bumpy emotional situation because what, at least me, because I used to work in a big corporation, I had a big team with me and so on. Uh, I moved from a situation like that to just working myself with, with my wife. So uh, I, I, you know, when you need to take a big decision, you are alone, uh, it can be quite scary. And, uh, and when something goes wrong, it, it's directly you. So there is no buffer, it's not big, big, big uh, team in me, uh, between you. So you might take it personal. My suggestion is don't take it personal. It's just business. My um, one of the best uh, recommendations I got from an experienced person a few years ago said, well, generically speaking, in properties, you will have 40 bad days. When one of those happen, just think, well, it's one of those 40, tomorrow or next week will be better. And I know that in that moment, you don't believe that. Because there, are more, there were moments where, you know, I look at myself and say, why the heck I'm doing this? Yeah? I used to travel the world in business class, with why I'm doing this kind of stuff. But then if your end goal is clear, you're going that direction, it's worth going through it. And so don't give up. These are the three words that if you talk with my two kids, they are the most spoken word for me. Never give up because you will go through it eventually and it's worth it. And, and you said you've got to have a reason to keep going and you were flying business class with Shell. So what makes running your own rent to rent business better than that? For me, the, the key goal is really have quality time and work when and when I want. So my key goal is I want to have the same holidays as my kids that they go to school. So every time the school is closed, I want to be able to choose not to work and travel or even stay in Bristol and spend quality time with them and with my friends. So it's not a, what is driving me is not having a Ferrari park on my driveway. If I've got it, I'm not going to cry, but that's not my drive. My drive is really having quality time to do the stuff I love, my sport, my travel, and spend time with my kids. And that's what uh, properties do. So, you know, there is a big miss of uh, passive income. I don't think there is really a passive income. 
but there is a very flexible way of work. Yeah, so I can run my business from my mobile phone if I want because technology is there, mm. which means that I can be skiing on the Italian Alps and I can still keep an eye on my business. If you have set up your business properly with system procedure, and maybe you outsource or delegate to your team some task, you don't need to be in the office nine to five. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and that's what I love about properties, the freedom that gives me to work when and where and how I want. And this is worth all the stress you can have as an entrepreneur, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Nicole's just saying, yeah, she was just asking from a taxation point of view, and Giuseppe did answer that. You need to take yeah. your own advice. And Tyron yeah. is saying, yeah, never give up. Never he give loves up. it. Yeah. And Nicole is saying, know your why. So important to stay motivated um, on, yeah. on the hard days. Absolutely. So, Giuseppe, we talked a little bit about you You help people get started. Um, have yeah. you got any success stories that you could share from the people you've worked with? Yeah, so I, I, I'm trying to help people to do what they did, or even better, obviously. And, uh, you know, as you do, what we try to do is to guide people, train people so that they limit the number of, of mistakes. I think one of the best stories... I did this mentoring course to one of my, my mentees and they want to do it really, really compact. So we did it just in two two weeks, uh, work a lot of hours during those two weeks. And when they started, they didn't know anything about rent to rent. Three weeks later, so from day zero when they started, three weeks later, they had one uh, rent to rent offer accepted, including a lease option. So wow. these guys in three weeks, they changed their life. And I, I want to believe that a little bit of my input was was there <laughs> to make of them course. successful. So, uh, what, what I love about mentoring, I, I, I've got a big business, so I, do, I really don't need the money of that man. But it's, uh, you know, the, the satisfaction of seeing people succeeding, thanks also to my help. And, you know, when they send me the selfie with their kids like this, I thank you, Giuseppe. And I say, yes, that's the best moment of my, my day. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely, Giuseppe. Thank you for sharing that. Melvina no. is making a comment there um, that she's confident speaking with people face to face. It's actually quite a long one. You have suggested a <laughs> course or get a great mentor or start contacting landlords. When is the next course? I need my book now. <laughs> I, think, I think the book is a great way. Read the book the first. Book and um and that might give you uh, and then you said you want to leave a legacy for your children which i totally understand um but i want to thank you giuseppe for coming and sharing so openly inspiring us all with your story and um the sure. success stories of some of your students um thank as we so close much. as we close uh, how can we contact you yes how can people contact you and um you know follow up with you giuseppe yeah, so you can contact me on my social media. So my name is Giuseppe Leone. And, um, or you can send me an email to gi at lyongateproperties.co.uk. And um, yeah, that's the best way to contact me. And, uh, and we can put some links under these videos. If, you, if you're yeah. in the comments later on, Giuseppe, just put your links there. I will. Um, Thank you so much. And um, we've got, oh, it makes me so happy when people say they're buying the book. Um, so um, Andrea says she got the book this morning. Uh, thanks, Andrea, for buying it. And I really hope you enjoy it and get a lot out of it. Um, so that concludes uh, for today's, today's live. And if you do want to get the book, I will put the link under the video from... Um, it should be Friday, but it may even be Thursday evening that it'll be available. It'll be half price all day on Friday. So make sure that you dive in then if you want to get it. You can just go to renttorentbook.com, rent number two rentbook.com, and it will divert to the Amazon page as soon as it's all ready to roll for you. So uh, thank you, Giuseppe, for uh, joining us today and being so amazing. And uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, very good luck with your book. I can't wait to read it. I'm sure it's going to be amazing stuff to read. So thank you very much for having me as well. Thank you. Thanks, then. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye.